Hello everyone and welcome to a new video of the Mastering Magica Voxel course. Today we're gonna talk about render and the display panel, so let's get started. I prepared this little scene for you guys so we can test out the render options. So let's go to our render button here and then let's go to the show image settings that you will find on the right top. In here you will have three options to render. So these are in addition to the fourth option, which is the capture image that we have on the bottom left here. When you click this button, you're gonna get a picture of your viewport, which is what we're seeing here. At the time we render, it will just take a snapshot with the noise we have, with everything, using these dimensions and this amount of samples. If, we, if you want to learn more about samples, go to my samples video that you're gonna find in the description of this video. Let's talk about the render options that we have right now on the image panel here. So the first one is photo. The benefit of this one is that you can go beyond the size that you can go on your viewport. As you might know, no matter the number you put there, you can not go over 2048 square. So if you needed a render that is 4000 by 4000, then you need to use the photo mode. You can enter your numbers here and it will use these dimensions for your render. Bear in mind that it will use this number for samples. So the bigger the number you put here, the slower the render will be and the less noise you will get. So when you're ready, just click render. And once you click save, you will start rendering. You see here the, the progress bar is going. It's very slow because I've added 10,000 samples, but you can now use the software until the render is finished. If you want to stop it, just press stop here and press yes. Moving on, we have the turntable option. This is a bit more complex. So the turntable you see has three options. The first one that we care about is the angle. This means that when you press render, it will start spinning around your model like this and it will do it in six frames. So you go like one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you wanted this to be slower, you need to add more frames just for you to have a reference. Each second of animation generally have from 24 to 30 frames per second. So if you want one second, just put 30. This will mean that it will go from the first frame all the way around and back to that first frame like that in one second. So it's pretty quick. Instead, you can put 150 if you wanted five seconds, for instance. So this will make your spin much slower so you would be able to see your model much better. Something that is important to bear in mind is that this will produce a sequence of frames. This will not make a video. You'll have to compile these frames in another software like Blender or After Effects or whatever software that you have. Just Google online how to do it. Otherwise, leave in the comments below if you need an, a tutorial on how to do that. So here are your frames, here are your angle. And the last option that we have is the blur. This basically will create a directional blur that will make it look like your model is spinning very fast. So if you want that, just add that blur. In general, I like my renders to be very crispy because the idea of a turntable is to actually see your model very well. So that's why I don't really use it. So once you press render, you will prompt a dialog that will ask you where to save it. I suggest you go on a folder because this will create a lot of files. So just name it turntable or whatever version 01. And once you save, you will start going frame by frame, rendering it, then we'll change lightly the ruler here and make another render until it makes the 360 on your model. I will stop this now. And something that I would like to show you is that when you open your ruler here on the bottom right and you move the horizontal value, you will see how your model will spin on the render. This is how it will do it. If your model is to the side or something like that, then your turntable, it will end up doing something like that. If you don't want that, you need to center your camera and the best way to do it is by pressing this button that says recenter camera or simply press number five. You need to have your object selected for this to work. Once you go back to your render, you can change, for instance, the vertical ruler. This won't affect how your model spins. You could also, with your mouse wheel, zoom out and this will also not affect how it spins. But if you wanted this to be higher up or something like that, you can use the camera options that you have on the bottom left. If you click this arrow here, you can use the Z axis, for instance, to move your camera up and down and always continue to check if your spin is working properly, because this is basically a preview of what you will get on your render. It's going to take a long time, so you want to get this right. Once you're happy, press render and it will just start rendering. Something that you need to bear in mind is that if you're using the bloom effects, this won't be saved 
in any of these options, animation, photo, or turntable, won't save this bloom effect. You can only save this bloom effect by clicking on the capture image down here. So something else that you can do is that if you click on your model, you will notice that you will start creating the depth of field. So it's blurring on the, on the front and on the back. But if I move my, my camera, you will notice that that goes away. If you want to keep that, just click the DOF button and this will maintain this blur throughout the turntable. Moving on, we have the animation. So if you want to know how to animate in Magic of Voxel, check out my animation video. Let's remove the aperture for now and let me show you how, what this will do. So if we open the animation panel here and we create a very quick animation, let's say the car is here and then by frame 30, the car is over here. So we have this animation right now. When you click render, it will go from frame zero from here to whatever frame you have here on the end. So if we don't change this to 30, we will not render our complete animation. We'll just render a third of it. You need to change the number to your last frame so you will get your whole animation. Once that is set up, you need to make sure your camera is in a position that you like and just doing this will basically preview your animation. This is what you will get on your render. So if you're happy with that, just click render and again, save it, whatever you want, animation 01. And once you press enter, it will start processing and it will go frame by frame from zero to 30. Now that we know how to use all of the options that we have on the render, I would like to talk a little more about some render options that we have in Magica Voxel. Those are in the display settings. In here, you will have a variety of options. This is very simple to use, but let's go one by one to see everything that you can do with this. If you click on where it says grid, you will notice that you have a bunch of options here, but to turn on the grid, you need to go down here and click this button here. When you click it, you will notice that it will create this grid on the sides of every voxel of your scene. If you wanted this only to affect the ground plane, you can click this ground button here. Furthermore, you have the option to make this grid bigger and thicker or thinner if you needed that. And lastly, you have an option to change its color, which is present in most of these options that we're gonna see. So if we click here, we can change this grid to be whatever color we want, or we can Alt, click and drag to pick a very similar color to the ground plane that we have already. Moving on, we have the edge. So I will turn off my grid now and I will turn on the edges. When I do this, I get this very thick black edge on every side of the voxels. Now, the cool thing about this feature is that if you make it very thin, let's say one, and you make it a bit brighter, but not too much, you can get a bit of a, an edge on your voxels and I really like to do this because because in reality objects are not perfectly sharp so this gives it a bit of a rounded edge so it's a little trick that I do for my renders see if you like it otherwise you can use it to have a very thick cartoon looking border on your model let's turn it off now and let's move on to the ground plane the ground plane you can change its color by clicking this box and moving the sliders but there's another trick you can do with this ground plane and that is by clicking alt and then clicking on the ground plane with your left click without letting go of Alt. This will basically allow you to change the material of the ground plane. So again, Alt, click on the ground plane. Now we are selecting this material. And when we change it, for instance, to metal, you will notice that now the ground becomes reflective. So if you want to create a cool effect of a glassy mirror or something, just make it more metallic, less roughness, or play with it however you want to get your scene looking amazing. For now, I will just change it back to diffuse. We also have the horizon option here. So if you move your camera and you are in perspective, you will notice a line there that's your horizon line. This option only works with the sky or the atmospheric scattering options. So if you click that, you will notice how this horizon line becomes very blurry. You can also move it back to zero and that will give you a very sharp horizon. Let's go back to our image-based lighting now and let's continue to see what other options we have in here. I will turn off my background and when I do that, you start seeing a bunch of colors. This is because I'm using the image-based lighting. If I didn't have that, you will see the color of the sky. So this is just the background that we have at the moment. We can otherwise turn on the background color and this will give us a constant color for our background that we can just click here and change. But we also have the option inside here to use a transparent background. This will change it to black, but whenever you save this image with 
whatever of these options or with your camera here, this will save a cutout of your model that if you open it in Photoshop, for instance, it will give you a transparent background because the PNG format can, set, can store RGB colors, which are red, green, and blue, and also A, which is the alpha channel, and that's your transparency. So if we open Photoshop, you will see that the car is floating on an empty background. And if we created another layer, we can paint behind it and you see is completely perfectly cut out. So let's move on now to the next option, which is scale. This will allow you to change your model scale just on the render. So this is kind of cool if you want to try different proportions for your model, because this won't affect your model. If you go back, you see that your model didn't change at all, but during render time, it will be squashed. So let's go back to 111 to have our original size. And let's go to the next option, which is the fun one, and it's called shape. This option here has six different varieties. Cube is what we are used to see in Magical Voxel, the normal cubes, but we also have, for instance, Lego. This will change your model and add these little cylinders on top that will make it look like it's made out of Lego toys. Then the next one is the marching cubes, and this will basically create diagonal geometry in your model. So this looks very cool with the metallic shader. Unfortunately, not all kinds of shaders work with this render method, but the metallic one works very well. You can also use the clay mode that instead of creating those diagonal lines on your geometry will be stepping and rounding out those voxels. So this is how it looks. I think it looks pretty, pretty cool. Then we have the spheres, which will make it look like it's made, made out of those spherical magnets that you can buy. So this is a very, very cool option. And lastly, you have the cylinder. This will make your model look like it's made out of cylinders. So the last option that we have is the cell option, and this will only work on the sphere and the cylinder. This will make each one of the cells smaller. So it will also do it with the spheres. Otherwise, they will be touching one another. But you can see that if you get close to this, it looks very, very cool. So these are all the options that you need to know to render your model. Let me know in the comments if you need a tutorial explaining how to compile frames into videos. Thank you and see you on the next one.